Hello again. Hound Dog with you in another historical aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. It is March 28, 1936, and we are flying the Grumman F-3F from the Anacostia Naval Air Station, Washington, D.C., to the USS Saratoga CV-3 for an arrested landing and free deck launch. Clear prop. Radio check, one, two, three, three, two, one, radio check. The controls are free. traffic and we're cleared for takeoff power coming up instruments are good Rolling. Airborne. Gear coming up. The U.S. Navy had experienced issues with the stability and unfavorable spin characteristics of the Grumman F-2F. In October 1934, even before F-2F deliveries began, Navy issued a contract to Grumman for an improved F-3F. The contract also required the new fighter to have a capability for ground attack. Powered by the same Pratt & Whitney R-1535 twin WASP Jr. engine as the F-2F, the fuselage was lengthened and wing area increased over the earlier design. A reduction in wheel diameter allowed greater fuselage streamlining eliminating the prominent bulge behind the cowling of the F-2F. The prototype was delivered and first flown on 20 March 1935 with company test pilot Jimmy Collins making three flights that day. The aircraft broke up in midair, crashing in a cemetery and killing Collins. A second strengthened prototype was built, but it crashed on 9 May of the same year following the pilot's bailout during an unsuccessful spin recovery. The second prototype was rebuilt in three weeks, flying on June 20th, 1935. An order for 54 F-3F-1 fighters was placed on 24 August of that year. The Grumman F-3F-1, also known as the Flying Barrel, was a single pilot tail dragger biplane, 23 feet long with a wingspan of 32 feet and a maximum weight of 4,795 pounds. It was equipped with retractable landing gear that required the pilot to make 26 full revolutions with a right hand manual crank while still flying the aircraft with his left hand. The F-3F was initially powered by the 650 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R-1535-72 Twin Walsh Jr. radial engine and had a maximum speed of 250 miles per hour with a 33,200 foot service ceiling. It could reach 480 miles per hour in a vertical dive. The barrel was armed with 130 caliber M1919 machine gun on the port side of the nose and 150 caliber M2 machine gun on the starboard side of the nose. 
It could carry a single 116-pound bomb under each lower wing. The first production F-3F-1 was delivered on 29 January 1936 to the test group at Naval Air Station Anacostia, with squadron service beginning in March to VF-5 of the USS Ranger and VF-6 of the Saratoga. Marine Squadron VF-4 received the last six in January 1937. Grumman wanted to take advantage of the powerful new 950 horsepower Wright R1820 supercharged radial engine and began work on the F3F-2 without a contract. The order for 81 aircraft was placed on 25 July 1936, just two days before the aircraft's first flight. The engine's larger diameter changed the cowling's appearance, making the aircraft look even more like a barrel. The maximum speed did increase to 264 miles per hour. The entire F3F-2 production series was delivered in between 1937 and 1938. When deliveries ended, all seven Navy and Marine Corps pursuit squadrons were equipped with Grumman single-seat fighters. Further aerodynamic developments were made to an F3F-2 return to Grumman for maintenance. It became the XF3F-3 and featured a larger diameter propeller, among other improvements. At this time, the new monoplane fighters like the Brewster F2A and Grumman's own F4F Wildcat were taking longer to develop than had been planned so to bridge the gap, the Navy ordered 27 improved F3F-3s on 21 June 1938. With the introduction of the Brewster F2A, the Navy's biplane fighter days were numbered. All F3Fs were withdrawn from squadron service before the end of 1941 and never saw combat in World War II. This was probably fortunate since the F3F was not destined to be a great fighter due to the poor pilot's visibility and the ineffective low caliber guns that were further degraded due to the lack of longitudinal stability. A total of 117 F3Fs were assigned to various naval bases and were used for training and utility duty until December 1943. The F-3F was featured in several Hollywood movies including Wings of the Navy in 1939, Flight Command in 1940, and Dive Bomber in 1941. Now is a good time to look at the U.S. Navy aircraft color schemes used before World War II. In the 1930s, the U.S. Navy focused on a color marking scheme to enable pilots and ground observers to quickly identify any given aircraft. This involved a combination of colors and letters and numbers. In 1936, each carrier was assigned a specific color that was painted on the tail of all aircraft assigned. Each squadron was divided into six sections with three aircraft each, and each section with its own assigned color. The color was in the fuselage band the cowl colors, and the upper wing chevron. The cowls were painted solid for the section leader, top half for this number two aircraft, and bottom half for the number three aircraft. Only the commanding officer and section leader aircraft had the colored fuselage band. On the side of each aircraft was a number letter number code, which indicated the squadron number type of squadron, and the aircraft assignment number in that squadron. So applying this identification paint scheme to our current aircraft, we see that we are flying aircraft number 7 assigned to Fighter Squadron 6 as the Section 3 leader, as confirmed by the solid cowl color and the section color band around the fuselage. <laughs> 